Hey everyone, and welcome to Cave Factory. This is the very first episode, and I, I'm ready to jump into it because I've never played anything like this. So a, a good summary of this mod pack would be that it's it's kind of like Stoneblock. I mean, you can kind of see if you've ever played those mod packs that were kind of just in a dome of stone, and you can even see in the mini map in the top right hand corner, it's just stone on stone on stone. Uh, so if you don't know what Stoneblock is, think Skyblock, but we're underground. Kind of, that's the only way I can describe it. So minimal resources and you're just trying to get to the next step. Uh, there's a bunch of quests, uh, as you can see from this entire quest chain that just kind of gets crazy. Uh, and there is create mod in here for all of the create mod fans that are in here. So, I mean, you can see right there an automatic kelp farm probably going to be, yeah, literally <laughs> use create to make an automatic kelp farm. I wonder if this guy watched my videos and that's where he got that idea. But there's a, there's a lot of other mods in here. I know blood magic is a huge one, uh, at least from my understanding. I've never used it. Um, as you can see, they're I'm pretty sure that this is what they mean by magic. I've, I've never used it, so we'll see how, how that works. A uh, bunch of other factory and tech stuff, tons of food, um, some exploration things, uh, a whole bunch of different stuff. So yeah, let's give me a moment to go ahead and read through this off camera. All right, so there's uh, there's a lot going on here. Blood magic, 100%. Uh, the factory stuff, I'm really not familiar with. I don't I don't know what mods this is. I guess it's immersive engineering. I, I've never used it before. Uh, tech stuff is pneumatic craft. Don't know that one's. Uh, the storage, it looks like we're just going into uh, Flux Networks uh, and kind of like an ME system. I believe that's what this is. Uh, it's refined storage, so it's a little bit different, but it looks similar. Uh, and you can automate crafting and stuff like that. Uh, and there's food and a bunch of other odds and ends. This looks like this is like maybe the Twilight Forest is eventually what we can go to. Could be wrong. There's singularities, and you can even go ahead and get like a creative fluid tank at the very end, which is <laughs> pretty cool. But uh, let's go ahead and start with this. Um, this step is just welcoming us to Cave Factory. We get some XP from it. Uh, and it says, sneak right click on a stone block with an empty hand to get some pebbles. Make sure the quest to the left of this one is checked. Scroll to zoom in and out and you also drag screen right, cool, whatever. So if we just shift right click, we'll get a bunch of pebbles. And then we can also take a bunch of pebbles in a crafting grid and make cobblestone, just like so. And I wonder, it looks like that's cobblestone bricks. I was gonna see if we could make, uh, make a crafting table, but uh, that should go ahead and give us, oh, it gives us a furnace, which is awesome. And then getting wood is different here. To get wood, throw cobblestone on the ground and wait around 30 seconds, okay? Also, a little quick side note. If you place a block, especially early on, uh, if you shift right click, you can pick up said block and walk around with it and then replace it. Really useful if you don't have the tool to pick it back up. Uh, but you see cobblestone turned into a bunch of different types of logs, so we'll get all that checked off. And now we're diving into, it looks like, uh, by throwing rotten flesh on the ground, you would get random mob drops. Cool. So we'll end up doing that. Cool. Just made a crafting table. Of course, just four planks. I made patterns. That's two sticks, two planks. And then if we take a, uh, pattern and we take a crafting table, we can make this into a crafting station. Uh, why is Rocket doing this? For those of you that don't know, if you throw items into a crafting station, you can leave them in there. So it's just kind of a little extra addition. Doesn't really cost much more. And that gives us the materials in you book, which should be all about Tinker's Construct. Okay, we just blasted through a bunch of these quests, uh, but I, I figured it would be easier to just run through uh, what's happened. So we've made a crafting station, which I think I showed you guys. Then we made a part builder, uh, which by the way, if you're looking for any of these recipes, just use just enough items. Um, and there's a, to a ton of different types. Um, they're all just from different woods that you use. Uh, but I made a part builder and I made a Tinker station. Part Builder allows us to take patterns and just like cobblestone or some type of material to create uh, different parts for the tools in Tinker's Construct. And then the Tinker Station, you can click on like, let's say the pickaxe. And as long as you make these three items, it will make said pickaxe, which is what I did. Uh, I made a stone pickaxe with a uh, wooden a wooden handle. Yeah, wooden tool handle, a stone pickaxe head and a stone tool binding. Uh, if you hold left control on top of these items, it'll tell you what it's made out of. And depending on what you pick, you can go ahead and kind of customize your pickaxe. Once you get all of that, you get a diamond, which you can then actually upgrade um, your tools with. It's recommended that I use diamond to upgrade, which I believe, yeah, the mining will then make this mining level diamond. Um, so we go from the mining level of stone to being able to mine all the way up to diamond, uh, simply with a stone pickaxe, a nice kind of customization. 
Now, our next goal is we have two different things. One is that we can work on just farming some zombies and things like that, because there is a zombie spawner uh, just over in this area. And I believe that via levers, you can turn on and off spawners, which is pretty cool. Uh, but also, it says inside of our quest line that at any point when we're mining stone, we have a chance to get random ores. Uh, so while we're making space for a factory, we have some chances to find diamonds and things like that, which is pretty awesome. So uh, let me go ahead and just make some space um, off into an area, just so we kind of have a space to start designing some uh, some create stuff in the future. So a little pro tip, uh, once, once you go ahead and progress in these quests a little bit, um, once you're finding ores, you actually get an iron chest upgrade. Just right click on a normal chest, turns to an iron chest, pretty cool. Once you go ahead and get nine coal, so you'll find coal ore, just place it, mine it. Uh, if you take a barrel and coal, uh, and it, I believe it's if we go around in a circle. Yeah, we get a dank one. Uh, and this is essentially, from my understanding, like a little bit of a backpack, and it can auto pick up items for you. So I believe like if we throw redstone ore in here, and then we throw redstone on the ground, yeah, it picks up right into the dank one, uh, as you can see right here. Now, uh, I believe there's some other options you can have here. I forget in how it works, uh, but right now I have it picked up to all. You can do a filtered pickup, you can do a void pickup, normal. Um, right now I'll probably just have it set to pick up all, but you can make it so like all of your ores are gonna be in here and it's just gonna pick up those ores inside of this uh, inside of this thing. And I believe you can also upgrade these danks. Yeah, it looks like, yeah. So like dank two is a bunch of blocks of redstone, then gold, emerald, diamond, uh, looks like obsidian. And then nether stars, which is kind of crazy. So this is kind of like a uh, individual backpack for us. And also, once you create this, they give you a magnet charm, uh, which will pick up items. Uh, I believe it, said it was five blocks away. Yeah, and XP as well while it's activated. So uh, I don't know where. Oh, it's gone into our thing. So all we do is right click, turns it on, click this little button, and you can actually put this into your inventory somewhere. There you go, we'll just throw it into this little area. And then I don't remember if you have to click this on or off, but this should. Now when I throw an item down, it did work. Okay, cool. So that, now we have a magnet, we have this, and then that should be when we farm zombies now, it'll actually pick up the items on the other side of this without having a, or without us having to worry about basically anything. So we, we have a couple options here, and I believe that the best ore processing system is the create one in this. Uh, with that, there is Tinker's Construct, so I don't know if we'll be able to mess with that to make things a little bit better, but uh, already we're at a progression state that basically is having us go andesite alloy, and then it goes all the way to like crushing wheels, and then it looks like it ties into like a seared heater. So I wonder if this is how we're going to kind of combine the two to make it so ore processing is like really good. Um, but of course, we have over here ore processing talking about uh, making an automated ore processing system with crushing, washing, compacting nuggets into ingots, uh, and then sorting it into corrected chests or drawers. Uh, so I believe with this that it's going to be just all create stuff. So maybe we'll go ahead and tackle more in the create section first. The andesite alloys and getting power and things along those lines. And I, I'm sure a couple of people are a little confused here. Uh, if you want to get andesite, because I haven't found it yet, if you take uh, any type of cobblestone, and diorite, it turns to andesite, or if you just smelt andesite cobblestone, yeah, smelting andesite cobblestone, that also turns into andesite. So there's there's one of your options. And also just a, another really fast tip. Uh, if you go over like a windmill bearing, let's say you wanna craft this, if you just press A on your keyboard, it will add to the left side of just enough items. So this is kind of like a, uh, a crafting area that's kind of just like, hey, this is things that I'm trying to create. And then you can just press A again on top to, to get rid of it. Cool, so our very uh, our very first power is gonna be a windmill. Uh, so we're just gonna place down this windmill bearing that I've crafted. And then I wonder if we can do this because once we completed this, it gave us a wrench super glue. I believe we just take spruce log and then I don't, let's see if we have to glue these guys. All right, cool. We actually don't need super glue. This is a very not great windmill. As you can see, it's turning very, very slow. And there's definitely some upgrades that we could do to this, uh, but now I'm just lighting this up. Uh, all we did was just place down a windmill bearing, connect it to a log, place some sails off the sides, and then right-clicked on the windmill bearing. And if we go to the very oops, the very back of this guy, you can see that it is spinning, so we can pull some power out of this. Uh, the reason I'm seeing all this data is I've thrown the engineer's goggles on, so make sure to do that as well. So something just popped up in chat. I've just been grinding, uh, killing zombies. By the way, brand new day in real life. 
Uh, and I noticed that it said your knowledge of death increased plus five. You earn two levels. Click here if you want to access the GUI to increase one of your perks. Uh, don't know what this is about, so let's go ahead and click on that. So I don't, I don't know this one. Knowledge of death, two of two. It looks like, uh, it looks like I have some areas that I can like spec into with like experience points. Uh, so it looks like like bone collector, you get 30% chance to find special drops of the undead, 10% potion duration for alchemist. So uh, I think, <laughs> I think I've become more confused than anything. But uh, all these things I could just spec into. So like one thing I'm probably going to do is 30 chance to find special drops on the undead. I don't know because it's a bone collector. I don't know if it's only skeletons. Um, but at least I think that's the most useful. There's like some other things like finding things from villages and stuff like that. I don't think that I'm going to be able to use that. This is pretty cool. It's ghostly shape. Essentially, if I die, uh, when I come back, I would have like feather falling like effect to me for X amount of time and stuff like that. Uh, there's like disenchanter. Um, I don't I don't know if I'd need that just yet. Uh, there is this. You have a chance to get an enchanted key. When you die, a gravestone's placed on the ground. You get a key. Click with the key. You get your items back. But if you have an enchanted key, you can teleport to your grave and then take your items. So this gives you a chance at that. I don't think that'll matter because I'm on my own, of course. And, uh, we're not really exploring far. So I, I'm thinking... I'm thinking I'm just gonna throw it into, uh, Bone Collector again. Because I, I'm level, like, two or whatever. So I, I'm sure I'm gonna level up a lot more. Okay, so we have started to do a couple different things in here. Uh, I want to really work hard in the series to make things start to look nice. So you can see I'm starting to texture just the areas around the circle, the starting room that we're starting in, which is some cobblestone. Probably going to incorporate some planks and things like that into here, just showing pathways and some pillars holding this place up. So as time progresses, we're also going to advance in machinery, but we'll advance in kind of how the place looks. Uh, at least that's my idea. Now, one thing you might realize is that my hunger is uh, has gone down and I don't have food at all. Uh, and I don't really have a way of making food besides rotten flesh, which is really not a good option. So I was looking into here our like quest. What is it called? Our basic automation. And you can see that as we kind of progress down, we have an option to finally get wheat. And uh, it says time to get some food. Fruit salad is pretty easy to get and gives a lot of saturation. I think that's our way to go. Uh, and in order to get that, we have to go to, uh, I don't know if we can say this on YouTube, but this word, uh, then we can go to dirt and then to kelp, and then it looks like to wheat. Uh, so let's progress here. We're gonna take a stop going in the create direction and just kind of head in this direction. Awesome. So we made the blood altar, uh, and then now we made it, or we got a dagger of sacrifice from that. We got the sanguine scientium. I think I butchered that really bad. Uh, and a diamond. So I'm going to read through this because this kind of just goes over blood magic, which is perfect because I have absolutely no idea how to use this mod. So uh, time for some reading. So it looks like uh, as long as I get my zombies to come over here, kill them with the dagger of sacrifice, it goes right into the blood altar. Uh, I have been reading through the book. The book is interesting because like most mods, since this is a very custom mod pack, uh, these things are not always in order. So I think the quest line does a better job because like, if I go in this direction, this is all the blood magic. If I'm going down here, this is the dirt to the food, stuff like that. Uh, so like right away, if I take granite, throw it into a blood altar, it turns to dirt. So what I'm doing is grabbing a uh, granite cobblestone, just smelting that, turning that to granite. And then I should be able to just toss this right into here, maybe. Ah, oh, yes, there we go. And that should turn, yep, right into dirt, like so. So now that we have dirt, uh, we got wheat seeds, which is really awesome. But we have the option now, if we throw dirt on the ground, it says wait 15 seconds and we get a random plant. And it looks like, uh, hopefully, eventually we get kelp and then we get a gluttony charm, which allows us to instantly eat food. So I'll throw a couple on the ground because the other two, I'm going to start with a, uh, a farm in a certain area. Yeah, it does just give us completely random plants. <laughs> you can see I got bamboo, sweet berries, wheat seeds, and eventually we'll get kelp, which of course goes in automation with create. Uh, but we do not have water at the moment, which is not good. However, oh, one thing I forgot about. We have this entire food section. So if you get any type of seed, you can claim XP from it, which is pretty cool. So there we go. We got kelp. We got a cactus, which is perfect because we can get our gluttony charm. And then we can also get sugar cane. And the big thing with cactuses is, is that we have the ability to use cactus to get water, I believe, in a mixer. Yep. 
if we mix it with the basin, it gives us 250 MBs. I always forget the, what that's actually called, but uh, of water. So we can, I think it's a thousand we need for one block. So four cactuses mixing return to water. One thing that we would run into as a problem is we do have power over here, uh, but we need to make a mixer and then, oops, we need to make a mixer. And then also uh, we would need to increase the speed to be fast enough for the said mixer to work. So uh, I've got some work to do. <laughs> interesting uh so i've spent some time i mean you can see in the create stuff uh but i basically ran out of food so i decided to start eating rotten flesh and it gave me a heart uh so it looks like when you eat different snacks it gives you benefits or disadvantages so uh it actually gave me a heart for eating rotten flesh that's actually kind of cool so uh probably once i'm able to grow some other odds and ends here i'll start eating like the carrots and potatoes see what benefits they get um, even things like spider eyes, you know what? <laughs> Theoretically, it should give us poison, but, uh, not yet eaten. What does it taste like? Oh, it's cause I, cause I literally can't eat it right now. There you go. Now I can eat it. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it gave me poison. I could see that. Uh, but it did, I think it did something else. I guess we'll find out once I get another spider eye. Uh, but I, I just like a little pro tip so you can wear the gluttony charm as you can see that one ate completely uh just all at once uh but you need to put it in the second to last spot and then you, i had to move the magnet down one more so if you want to have both of these equipped make sure to do that uh we also now have this entire contraption set up now uh you can skip this part timestamps wise if you know create mod but i know probably a couple people will join in that don't know the mod so Essentially, a, a mixer needs to be at a certain speed for it to work, as opposed to a mechanical press does not. Um, however, oh, it looks like we can keep both of these guys on. Uh, one thing you have to worry about is if you have like one power source, you can like put too much on that power source and it will shut off. One easy way to fix that is if you use these clutches. Uh, you just use redstone. It just shuts the power off to whatever machine is connected through it. Uh, but we have a mixer that is going at 128 stress units, uh, or well, I guess it's the stress, but it's it's going fast. Let's go with that, as opposed to this press is going a little bit slower, you can see, based off of uh, the speed of how much it's turning. So what we did here is we just pulled the power from the uh, from the windmill, went large cogwheel to small, large to small, large to small, large to small, large, and then technically the small, I used a vertical gearbox to basically turn the power and then I put it backwards, it's kind of glitching through, but it still works. So if we put our cactus now in here, and I believe we will need, we'll start with one. Yeah, you can see we got 250 MBs, uh, I believe. Yeah, we can't pick it out. I think we would need a thousand. So we're going to throw three more in here. If anything, we need, uh, we need at least two buckets of water. But this should then process, uh, as you can see, via the, uh, via the fluid container info should process enough and so we can actually get a water bucket and then I'm going to put it right into this corner. I'll make ourselves an infinite water source really quick so we can put four more of these guys in here and there we go infinite water source perfect <laughs> and weirdly enough it looks like oh wait this is different so we have the dank one but it gave us a tank one which looks like this can hold like a bunch of liquid how would this work? Interesting. So if you alt right click, uh, you're able to swap um, between fill mode and like place mode. And then if you press O, you can do your settings. So you can see that it looks like we have like three sections of tanks. All of them have 4,000 MDs, so four blocks of water each. Uh, and it looks like you can check it between filling and not filling, smart placing and not placing, and you can also do sponge mode. Uh, probably won't click on sponge mode because it'll probably just get rid of all of this water. Uh, but that's kind of cool. Another, like a better way to basically transport water now. So my next step that I really want to work on is just making this area start to look a little bit nicer. And then I want to make a farm area, maybe off in this direction where we can start farming some new crops as we go ahead and receive them. Uh, also, we'll kind of figure out little benefits that we get depending on what we eat, uh, which will, I'm assume will be very helpful in the future because I can see that there are bosses and things like that that we're going to have to fight. All right, I've done some very 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 basic stuff uh because we don't really have many materials to work off of and uh i honestly i need to work on a food source more <laughs> but uh i've just textured the ground a little bit just some cobblestone some andesite cobblestone and some spruce planks nothing fancy at all but just enough to kind of make it so i'm not just standing in a stone room 
Uh, I've also added some pillars just with some oak logs, some spruce fences, uh, kind of like support beams. Uh, I really need to add some other color into this like palette. I'm thinking something green, like maybe some leaves and stuff like that growing in this area, make it more uh, overgrown, if that's the right word. But uh, that will be once we actually have that as a material. We don't have that as a material yet, so. But our next step is now the farm, which uh, there won't really be much to it, but it'll be something that I can passively kind of work towards over the next uh, the next episode or so. And there we go. We got our first plants down there. Uh, this room does not look special at all, but uh, I know I'm going to be reworking this probably a ton as we get the couple thousands of plants that we can get inside of this game. Uh, everything from basically every single type of sapling to ginger seeds to flax seeds, everything. Uh, but we now have wheat growing and we have some carrots growing and I'm sure that I can go ahead and gather some other odds and ends basically throughout this. Uh, I've also made this checkerboard area over here. This will be for once I can plant cactuses and plants like sugarcane, things like that. But I really need some sand to go ahead and place that down. Uh, but I'm sure I'll be able to get that pretty soon. So I think that about wraps it up, actually. I'm going to end the episode here. Hopefully it's not too, too long. We've done a couple odds and ends inside of this episode. Let me know in the comments, any uh, feedback, comments, anything that you recommend that maybe I dive into a little bit more in the next episode, such as like, oh, blood magic rocket. That would really help you out. Dive into that uh, or anything along those lines. But thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.